Hi dear students, today we will take our second online lecture in management of specialized corporations by Dr. Sara Saint. Our second lecture will be the rest of chapter 2. So it will be explained the second half or the rest of chapter 2 and by the end of this um, explanation chapter 2 will be ended so I'll um, remember you that or memorize you that we have taken chapter 1 and by end of this lecture we will take also chapter 2 and inshallah at our next lecture which is in campus lecture we will have start uh, started in chapter 3 the rest of chapter 2 mainly concerns with steps of process design. Steps of process design. Most remember that we have a main four steps. They are idea development or new idea develop um, um, uh, idea development or uh, idea uh, for new product development, product screening, pre preliminary or primary design and testing and finally final design again we have four steps uh, idea development for new product uh, second step is product screening third step is preliminary design and testing final design which is step four First, we'll have um, idea development for new product. We will talk about the ideas will come from customer or competitors. Customers or competitors. The idea represents a flow of information that will help you in order to make a decision for the production of new product and how you put the product specification correctly therefore you need a huge amount of information in order to put a correct specification for your new product this will come from customers and competitors and also what's called reverse engineering some of you will ask what about brainstorming? Brainstorming is a trend or a way in order to generate ideas for new product. But these ideas may not connect to your customer or your market or to customers' wants and needs. Therefore, you must combine or connect what you have from information about customer and competitors and what you have from ideas or new ideas from your brainstorming session which is very important and very excellent example for idea generation it is used really used but it must be connected to customer wants and needs and here you'll find the role of marketing research which will enter to market and make a marketing report about the customer wants and needs also you can study competitors through what's called a benchmarking what's called a benchmarking benchmarking is to study the best in class or best actions or best processes found at your competitor in order to be take a formulation or uh, uh, take a details about the process or about the new uh, product or products existed at your competitor in order to be uh, um, found information to have a designed your designed uh, new product therefore benchmarking will put you 
a step forward. Buy what is the best at your competitor in order that you can um, duplicate or imitate or uh, make like your competitor in order to produce uh, a new product which can be existed to your competitors but you can make it at a better way or a more competitive way it's a play of competitiveness by the way you will study your strengths and try to increase but by the competitor have which is the role of benchmarking reverse engineering it's a process of disassembling of any product for example you are a toyota company and your competitor which is chevrolet has a new edition for a car and you decide to have also a new edition for your cars like Corolla. you decide to study the car of Chevrolet which is a new edition for Chevrolet through buying this car and by the help of your technicians engineers will disassemble this car to study the features to study parts study raw material to study everything in this car in order to make a two decisions number one however your edition will be a picture or the same as what Chevrolet make which is called imitation or you going to modify the or improve the uh, product of uh, Chevrolet which is a new edition of Chevrolet to have a most better or more uh, or a better uh, new edition of your cars this will be a higher a higher technology or to get what's called the know-how or experience of your competitors through reverse engineering after you get the idea development of new product you're going a step forward to product screening which depends on any company as product screening team that evaluate the product design idea through different departments for example you have operations market and marketing and finance you're going to the product screening team going to operations department and see if they have enough capacity for production if they have uh, the suitable technology for production of this new product the purchasing uh, strategy will help or assist in production of this new product uh, the existed uh, uh, or existing uh, skills of labor is very suitable for this new product the machines the facilities the scheduling planning all of those are a vital points that would be used in order to get information how operations department is ready for this new product or not from operations uh, uh, department we will going to marketing department we'll see that if the marketing uh, marketers or marketing research team can help in making the customer ready uh, to this new product uh, how the customer will cope with this product uh, if they have a promotional very strong pro promotional campaign they can put excellent pricing strategy they can put also what's called <clears throat> a distribution strategy for your new product and how can be um, found in the market how can be introduced to the customer all of these uh, information is very important to 
the product screening team in order to decide that marketing department, your marketing, marketing department inside your organization is ready for uh, this new product or not. Transferring also to finance. Finance department mainly depends on the investment plan. The investment plans that uh, are formulated by financial managers, if it is ready or there is a liquidity, there is a, a, a enough sources to get a cash or to get a, a fund in order to uh, make or produce this new product, or there is a poor, poorly uh, um, funding plans for this new product, therefore you will see the readiness of financial or investment plans or sources of fund for your new product or not. After screening all of your departments, you can easily go to the other step. And by the way, you must be a certain, you must be sure that each step is completed and ended in order to transfer to the other step. If there is a problem in any step, you will be stopped immediately in order to solve the problem of this step and then you can accomplish this step and transfer to the next one. Third step is preliminary design and testing. Preliminary design and testing always is a, um, a vital and a rescue step for avoiding what's called the product refinement. Product refinement is the total cost can you afford after recalling a refused or a defected new product from the market. Which means that if you skip, skip our preliminary design and testing and you produce and sending or transfer your final product, your new product to the market and the market refused this product. So it will be completely recalled. Maybe the market accepted and you have a huge defect or error or technical problem at your product. Also, it will have a bad image and negative perception to your brand or your product, which is also new by the way. Therefore, you will also make a product refinement or product modification with a huge level or amount of cost. Therefore, you're going to a primary or a preliminary design and testing where you have a prototypes for your new product which will be distributed or will be used by a sample of a customer, maybe your internal um, employees and labor or worker. Maybe you um, chose such uh, or specific markets to have a limited edition or production about new product to see the feedback from customers as you found in many uh, huge or large hypers like Hyper, uh, Saudi, Spinis, Kherzaman, uh, uh, Carrefour. You find that such or some um, organizations giving you a sample to try it or to give a feedback about this product in order to have a testing in the market to see whether it is accepted by the market or it is rejected by the market. <clears throat> After preliminary design and testing, you will go to final step, which is final design. Here, in final design, you will find what's called the final product specification. You will put a final product design in, on which you will produce your new product and will be delivered to the market. 
Second topic in your um, chapter is process design. Process design is, uh, sorry, process decision. Process decision is very important to make a decisions about your process of production or manufacturing. These decisions have some criteria in order to make it rationally. So, to make a process decision, you will have some criteria on which or upon which you will have a rational one. Number one, vertical integration. Vertical integration, it is the integration between you as a manufacturer and your customer and your supplier. So, you will have an integrated with both sides, customers and suppliers. If you concern or focus only, only on a, a supplier integration, it's called a backward integration. However, you focus only on your uh, customer integration, it's called a forward integration, a forward integration. Therefore, a vertical integration, it's two types. One is backward and the other is forward. <clears throat> the second type or second criteria for process decision is make or buy. However, you will make it or produce your product or to buy your product. Some factors will control you in order to take your decision to make or to buy. Number one, strategic impact. You will have your competitive priorities that will direct you, however, to make or buy. Some of them, some of them, maybe you have a competitive advantage in such um, uh, uh, like your skilled workers, like your high technological facilities and machines, all of those are competitive advantage that you have inside your organization. Therefore, you will decide. You will decide to make. If you have many problems or weaknesses, or you can't control your production system, so you will have a decision to buy. By the way, make or buy, it's a game for organization survival. And you must know that it's not connected to profit maximization as objective, but it's coming forward to survive. If you not survive, you will be ended and not existed in the market, will be getting out of the market because it's a very virus uh, competition. Therefore, your first criteria or first factor to make or buy decision is a strategic impact. Going to available capacity. If you have availability or the ability to expand your capacity, therefore you will make your products. But if you have a limited capacity, you will buy your products. Also, expertise. Expertise, you can exchange this concept with the concept of know-how or technology. If you have your own know-how and technology, which you are uh, um, a competitive and only a uniqueness and the core competency for your organization, 100% you will make in order to keep your know-how or, te or technology to yourself only. And can't any one of your competitors enter, uh, interpret or getting or uh, having your know-how. But if you haven't any know-how and your technology is very poor, so you're going to what's called a buy decision. Quality consideration. Quality here, not only to have a, a, a highly uh, non 
defected uh, products, also it can be environmental way. There is a quality specific with the environmental um, uh, conditions or considerations. Therefore, if you haven't any control, uh, quality control system, if you haven't quality assurance, therefore you will buy your products. But if you have a quality department and strong quality control system, which decrease or you can have what's uh, what's called a zero defect production, therefore you will make your product speed. If you have a strong network of transportation and the flexible production system and the f and very excellent production flow scheduling and durations, therefore you can make your product as your products will be on time to your customer. While if you have a problems in your scheduling, a problem duration, uh, sorry, a production duration problems, which will lead you to have a disturbance in delivering your products to customer, which will make a problem and will make your customer exchanging you with your competitors. Therefore, you are going to a buy decision. Finally, cost and cost is the main decision for outsourcing. If you have uh, a controllable cost planning or system that let you to have a very low, specifically a very low uh, labor cost, this will lead you to have what's called a make decision. But if your cost level is very high, and you can't control your production system, therefore, you will go to a buy decision. Finally, our final topic today is designing process. How you can design your process? There are two types for designing a process. Some, it's, the first one, it's called process flow analysis which mainly depends on what's called process flow chart. It's a very easy um, way in order to put your processes in a sequence. You will put your processes in a sequence through giving each process a sample. For example, a production process, it's, will, uh, it will have a sample um, like a circle, while storing or inventory will have a sample like a triangle. We going to the transportation or handling process will have a sample like a square. So you can put a triangle or a circle or a square in a sequence in a sequence in order to learn which one will start and which one will end and the when will start and the when will end. Therefore, you can make a control in your du duration of each process and to prevent any waste in your time. Finally, process re-engineering is a redesigning of process in order to have a radical change at your processes. And by the way, it is heavily connected to a change management. I hope that all of the previous topics are easy and clear for you. Please, if any point is unclear, make a remark or a note and ask me next lecture, which is face-to-face -face or in-campus lecture. Thank you for your attention.